Hi, welcome to Kiel Photography. Um, today I'm going to actually be going over uh, an accessory for your telescope made by Mead um, that actually works with the majority of telescope, uh, go-to telescopes. Um, it's actually called the Mead Stella Telescope Wi-Fi Adapter. Uh, basically it's just an accessory that connects to your telescope, uh, allows you to use your smart device, iPad or Android device, um, to connect it to the telescope and basically from your device tell your telescope where to go. Um, I've actually been using it for a little while now and it might actually be one of my favorite accessories to use for astrophotography. Planning and uh, just planning out and figuring out what uh, I'll be actually photographing um, and exactly where it will be in the sky and how it will look. Anyway, let's get started uh, looking at this device and uh, hope you learned something. Okay, so let's open the box and actually see what you get. Um, so yeah, it, it actually comes uh, packaged like so with uh, the accessory here, um, charger here, and then a Velcro pro strap. So it'll, it makes it easier to actually attach it to your telescope or to the mount that your telescope's on. Okay, so on the underside um, of the accessory um, is the charging port right here. Uh, it's your standard micro USB that you can actually just plug it in like that or like that. Um, and then there's a uh, light that actually comes on showing that it's actually charging. Um, if you do lose this though, what's nice is since it is a standard USB, um, it actually, uh, it allow like you can use, a, a lot of phone chargers actually have the same charger, so, um, I've actually used my own charger to charge this a couple times, so that's one of the advantages of that. I'm probably going to get grief about tablecloth not being iron, but it is what it is. The next thing that you'll actually want to, uh, have is to have a way to connect the accessory, Stella, to your go-to mount telescope. Um, these are two serial um, connectors. Uh, this one specifically is for my need go-to mount, and then this one's actually for my Celestron go-to mount. Um, I was actually hoping that my Celestron one would work for my need go-to mount, but it turns out that I actually had to buy both. So anyway, just something to, to, to think about. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, basically, you just connect the connectors like they like it looks like they connect. These two connect like that, or with the Celestron, like, oops, just like that. So you'll take your uh, Stella wireless uh, device, attach the serial cable. Probably should uh, connect these so it stays in a little more, a little better. Okay, and then take the telephone end, and on most telescopes, the hand controller that comes with it, um, there's usually two uh, connectors. Uh, one actually goes to the telescope, right here, and then the other is where this one goes. Just like that. Clips in, not a problem. So first you actually want to connect uh, the Wi-Fi on your iPad to the Wi-Fi that Stella is actually giving out. Um, second, uh, you'll actually come in here. Um, let's see if I can get that a little focus. Okay, there we go. All right, uh, click on settings down here, and then um, up here you actually want to type. Uh, well, down here there's telescope. Select telescope, then up here scope type, and this is all the scope mounts that Stellet actually works on, which is part of the reason why I, you know, actually like this accessory so much, is because it doesn't matter which mount I actually um, buy, it should actually work with all of them. <clears throat> okay, and I have tested on both of mine and it actually does work. Okay, so um, I actually have the Star Navigator uh, by Mead. Um, it's the uh, next generation, um, 130 millimeter scope. Um, and for that, they recommend uh, the Meet ETX 90-125. Um, this is for your ETX series. Select that, click done. And then once you're actually in the app, um, and it's connected, so then you come down to scope, 
click on scope, connect, click on connect. Okay, so it's actually connected right now. It's pointing at Capella, even though we're in my studio. Um, it's actually pointed to where Capella actually would possibly be because that was the second star with my alignment process. Um, that's another thing. You actually, I'm, I mean, you can actually align in the app, but it's preferred to um, align uh, beforehand. At, at least that's, that's what I like to do. Okay, so once you're actually in here, then you can actually just kind of scroll around select an object of maybe what you want, select it, nope. there we go, and then you actually just hit go to, if you can see that, it's now actually going, there we go, well, I mean, more or less where it would be. Okay. All right. So, um, so there's that. Now, uh, let me actually show you another feature that's actually pretty cool with this. Um, let's bring you in a little closer. Okay. Now, adjust that focus. You can actually come into the settings, and you click on under the telescope area. There's equipment. You can actually configure this so you can actually have every single uh, piece of equipment that you have and all the specs on it. Um, so in here, um, you've got eyepieces, binoculars, cameras, and you can actually add different information for the camera. Um, I actually just left um, the, the standard ones that are actually uh, built into that. Um, Barlow, uh, you, you can add, add Barlow's or focal reducers. and let me show you why this is actually so once that all that information is in here then you click on display then you come up here and there's uh, different fields of view that it actually gives okay and you can actually select which one you like um, so I actually set this one up um, this one's actually for my 8 inch uh, Celestron that I have but let's use the next one down okay so we'll use my refractor uh, click OK and it's actually hold on do this one more time sorry okay that's that's for the guide chip that's actually uh, if you're actually using a guiding camera you can actually also use it to show um, like you can actually uh, I don't know put a an example of what it, of what your uh, your guide chip will actually see for your guiding camera okay so it's the second one all right so we'll select my refractor and then we'll use the CCD camera down here that I just left on there from before. And uh, instead of the focal reducer, we'll actually just turn that off. Okay, come back here to done. All right, so now it actually shows me in that little box exactly what the camera will see, like a, how much surface area. So when I'm actually photographing, like say the Horsehead Nebula, um, that's that's more or less the field of view that the camera will see uh, another thing is um, you can actually change the field of rotation um, so you can actually adjust since you can do this in real time with your actual camera sensor you can actually adjust exactly how the camera or you know more, more or less what like angle you'll actually want the camera when you're actually photographing actually is so let's also grab my 8 inch Telestron and let's leave the camera on there. But then let's actually also add the focal reducer. Okay, let's come back here. Sorry, one more time. Uh, let's, uh, here it is. Okay, so for my guide camera, I'm actually also, because I do have a, um, an off axis guider, uh, I've never actually used it <laughs> yet, uh, but I do have one. Um, just haven't gotten around to using it yet okay and you can actually use the guide chip down here using the same camera or the same telescope that you're using before and what it does oh i didn't actually turn it on okay once it's on then what it does is it actually adds this extra little box right here um which will show you okay well that's that's going to be where the guide chip will be and so you can actually adjust this so you can say, oh look, there's like three stars in there um, that are going to be able to be picked up by my guide camera. So 
I should actually be pretty good. So now we'll take off the focal reducer. And say done. And all of a sudden it's quite limited more. And if you want even more, then you do the same thing. So settings, come back here. Um, let's actually add a 2x Barlow on there. And so now you can see it's actually significantly. Oh, that's really bright. Anyway, but as you can see, um, it actually will adjust the frame for of what your camera will actually see. Okay, um, so now that we're actually, I don't know why I didn't have this before. You can still see the app just fine. Anyway, okay. Um, so now that we're actually uh, now connected to my Celestron uh, telescope, um, we are going to just show you and, and you know kind of exactly what 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 it, what you want to do. So in your settings, you'll actually change your down here setup telescope type. You'll want to change that. I've already changed this to uh, up here Celestron AVX mount because that's what it is, um, and then also. The, whoops, you actually want to change your mount type, um, whether it's an alt azimuth or equatorial. Uh, this is an equatorial, German equatorial go to, so that's exactly what I selected there. Okay, once that's done, you hit connect, and it actually is connected. Connected, and right now I'm pretending that we're, you know, focused on Andromeda when really, when you're in a basement, there's really no way that you can align properly. Okay. So, once again, kind of the frame that we talked about, like the field of view, exactly what your camera will see. Um, the Andromeda, wow, we're going to see the very center, and that's about it. Let's just change that real quick. Um, okay, sorry. Display, field of view, let's... Uh, we don't want that Barlow. Let's put the focal reducer back on. Done. And that's yeah, a little more. Let's change that just a little more. At the angle, let's do like this. There we go. Okay, done. Uh, let's zoom out. Let's actually go over to let's go to Beetlejuice. I can find it. There it is. Okay, so select the star and go to. It's actually pretty responsive for the most part. <clears throat> also, um, one key feature that I actually left out. So, oh, hey, there's field juice. Okay, all right. Okay, so now it's actually here. What's actually kind of nice too is without using the hand controller, you can actually use these buttons on either side to control the scope. So if you actually want to just adjust things a little more, like, and obviously these, we're doing it pretty quick, but down here is a right slider. So you can actually adjust. See, and now if I'm moving it, it still moves. Right, let's zoom in so you can see that a little better. See that? So it actually still moves, it just doesn't move quite as quick, so you can actually just... Anyway, so it's actually kind of nice because it's less touching the actual telescope, um, and it's a little more... gives a little more precision. Let's go over one more thing, and then we will be done. A couple more key... Fe Whoa. Oh. That's right, we, uh, connection failure. Sorry. Unhooked it from the telescope. Okay, so a couple more key features um, that I actually did not go over that I would like to go over now is um, there's a night mode, so you can actually make sure that you know you don't ruin your eyes uh, while you're out uh, stargazing. Uh, second, um, and this is well, I mean, there's a whole bunch here, and it would take a while to go over everything. But uh, one final thing that I wanted to go over is uh, what is my daughter's favorite. And what that is, is it's the orbit mode. Okay, so what happens is uh, right there, um, it actually will 
uh, show what it looks like. Like, so we had Beetlejuice selected before, so it actually will go to the star Beetlejuice, and you can actually, like, go around and see exactly what is going on. So there's our sun clear over there. Nope. There we go. So now if we select our sun, hit orbit one more time, then it actually travels over to our sun. And then you actually get to see our whole solar system. Kind of the same thing. And select like Pluto, hit orbit one more time, and then actually we'll zoom in on or on on Pluto. And then you can actually like look all around it, see what its course is, see kind of where it is relative to the sun. Anyway, very 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 cool. Let's see if we can. And actually, uh, Saturn is it up? Is it opposition tomorrow? Hopefully, I don't know if we'll actually get this. I don't know when I'll actually get this posted, but Saturn. Nope. You know what? I don't know if that's Saturn or not. Could be Jupiter. They're both kind of red over there. So let's actually go over and take a look. And actually, so oh, we did select Saturn. Awesome. Okay, so. Yeah, I wonder if they've got, uh, and actually I don't even know about this, but they might actually have satellites. Maybe you can see where Cassini is. Okay. But anyway, so that's kind of another way to actually explore the cosmos from inside your home. Something that the kids actually really do like. Like my daughter, she loves this. This is her favorite. And with the touch of the button, you get brought back to Earth. So, it's actually pretty cool. Anyway. Yeah, hope you learned something about this app and this uh, accessory for your telescope, and we'll see you on the next video.